So when we on the systems ecology and, and uh, particularly mathematical modeling and systems ecology, it's not a very it's not a very simple simple job. Really, it's an easy thing to do. And it's largely because if you take the different systems and you want to have a holistic view of them, then you're going to start to you need to integrate different kinds of mathematical models. And uh, it's not always obvious how to take two very different mathematical models and to integrate. You know, you're dealing with uh, Reproduction on the one hand and uh, complete transmission on the other, or, or behavior and, and population dynamics, and bring all of these things together and be a little bit of a I'm going to show some of the work that we've done um, in addressing the question of biological control of the disease vector and taking a holistic, um, system wide view of how we can assess the best way to, to uh, use biological control mechanisms against the speaker, and uh, we're talking about a, a, a novel predator of the uh, speaker's arm. So our system involves uh, the speakers that uh, lay their eggs in intensive pools, and these pools are a, a limiting source of the speakers, there aren't a lot of them around, and we know that the speakers can use chemical means to detect uh, the presence or absence of larval predators in these pools, and the speakers can also uh, Except the number of, of uh, concentrated larvae in the pools, which may have a, a, a influence on, on their behavioral decisions. The reason for that is that there is an obvious trade off. The speaker can either choose to uh, lay her eggs in a, in a pool that's got no predators, and in that case, there may be an overabundance of larvae and there will be negative density dependent effects, or the speaker might choose to lay her eggs in a pool with, with predators, in which case, a larvae may be eaten, but at least they won't be competing with other mosquitoes. The usual way that, that one would deal with the situation is to look for the evolutionary state of strategy, uh, and to find the, the overposition strategy, the splitting between the two types of pools, for which the fitness of an egg in each pool is equal. And at that point, then, when all the population adopts that strategy, then a deviant procedure that decides to lay more eggs in one kind of pool rather than another will gain no, will gain no fitness advantage. That's the that's standard there. Unfortunately, as soon as you go to real systems um, with, uh, with more complex interactions, this approach doesn't work. And in our case, it doesn't work because the behavioral decisions of the mosquito not just, don't just affect the number of eggs that they lay in. It also affects the life cycle of the mosquito and perhaps um, their, their survival and how many eggs they lay overall. I'll demonstrate this. You have two types of, of uh, extreme um, strategies for an overall extreme mosquito. You can call them picky out and impatient. Now, a picky mosquito is going to go from pool to pool looking for the ideal pool that wants to lay an egg. Um, she might come across one with predators, one that's got too many other mosquito larvae in, and she'll only lay her when she finds the perfect pool. The problem, of course, is that on the way to pool to pool, she herself is exposed to risk predation. And, uh, and so, although her larvae may be, may be in, a, in a perfect environment, she may not end up laying any eggs at all. The alternative is an impatient mosquito who will lay her into the first pool that she comes across. Whether it's got it may be full of predators, but at least she's laid it out. Now, it's clear then that impatient speakers are likely to lay more eggs than, than picky ones. Um, so even if the <coughs> even, me, since the thickness of the egg is the same, the uh, the uh, crude thickness of the of the mother um, may may be better, may be higher. So our we built a a an integrated model using two different very different mathematical models and we and we stitch them together. This is a pretty standard uh, structured population model. We have two pools, two, 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 two pools separately, but they're basically similar. Eggs um, has to the immatures, immatures go on to the adult, uh, some of them survive each day, some of them uh, move on to the next stage. And all of these parameters are, are fairly easy to obtain from empirical results. And then you get to the adults. Now the adults of course can lay their eggs either in um, the predator three pools or in the predator pools. And, uh, and adult stage get them to cross over between two types of pools. But these parameters in red uh, are very strongly dependent on behavior of the mother, on the, on the opposition strategy. 
both the survival of the adult, how much uh, she was close to predation and uh, going to fall before, and the number of eggs that she laid in these kinds of calls. So in order to derive these, these values, we need to look a little bit more closely at the adult behavioral cycle. This is a second mathematical model, completely different. This is a remarkable model. And here we simulate the, the um, process of the adult um, behavioral cycle. We start with a mate with mosquito, take the blood meal, the same, and then start to assume to survive all, all of that, and then die in the process, start looking for food. She survives the search for a pool, uh, she may either find uh, one of the types of pools, depending on the problem the uh, distribution of in the environment. And when she gets to the pool, she can either choose to lay her eggs, or to go back and, and search for another pool. So that these two um, parameters here, A and B, define the, the opposition strategy. How likely she is to lay her eggs in a pool that she's under the And the nice thing about the Markov model is that you can derive a close form expression for useful things, for instance, the number of eggs laid in each type of pool. This is the question. <coughs> uh, now, there are two types of grounds in this model. Uh, the environmental grounds, which is the uh, survival rate, so she survived the blood meal, and, and so on, which we turned into those folks and, and put them all together in a single ground, uh, which defines the safety or the survival, the survival of the environment. There's also the, the uh, distribution of different types of pools in the environment, and the environmental then there are the behavioral factors, the, the strategy. Now, the time is going to too much detail of, of how the, the love density affects this, but um, I have to uh, take my word for a little bit more hope to focus this. We can express the opposition strategy by the probability of laying uh, eggs in a pool when there are no larvae present. That uh, denotes by A0, B0. On the other hand, of course, we know that A0 is. Um, a zero must be one because there is no better pool than a, than a pool with no predators and no and no larvae. So we can define our opposition strategy purely by the probability that the mosquito will lay her eggs in a present pool that she encounters. And um, again, without going into the match too much of the nice little theory of the theorem in, in the evolutionary stable strategies, that if we consider our two pure strategies, picky and impatient. Picky will never deposit uh, eggs in a pool with predators. Impatient will always deposit eggs in a predator pool that she encounters it. Then um, the evolutionary stable strategy we can find when, we, when the differences of these two strategies are equal. I'll demonstrate that here. On the x axis is the opposition strategy of the entire mosquito population. And these two lines represent the differences of the deviant mosquito who decides to adopt a different opposition strategy. Um, picky and impatient. And when these two differences are equal, this is the, this is the evolutionary stable strategy, this is what we can expect to see in the, in the population. So we plug this all into the model, we run the model, and uh, we get some results. Here on the left, we see the, the daily survival of the adults. This is a safe environment, and this is a risky environment, and this is the number of predator pools in the environment, they are very rare, they are very common. And you can see that the opposition strategy, the chances of her leg and egg in a predator pool, vary pretty much across the whole range of values. But what's interesting here is that in a very risky environment, the probability of laying eggs in a predator pool drops to zero. Now, this might be a little bit surprising because you might have thought that if there are a lot of uh, adult predators around, um, she should lay her eggs as soon as possible. She should be very patient. Otherwise, she may not have any, uh, any, have any offspring at all. Um, that's the, it might be your initial impression. This is incidentally a very good reason to do mathematical models because sometimes ant in ecology gives you completely the wrong answer. Um, that is not the case. Um, we would in fact expect the opposite and for the following reason. If the environment is very rich, the adult population is very low. If the adult population is low, then the larval population is low. And remember that the balance that, we're, that the mosquito is looking for here is to compensate the predatory loss with the savings by avoiding the overcrowded pool. So if there are no overcrowded pools because the adult population is low, there's no advantage to going and laying eggs in a predator pool. So uh, in fact, the phenomenon that, that, we, that we saw on the previous slide is a real phenomenon and something that, um, that is very important when you want to, to, to draw up integrated um, biological control standards. So, we can see that the, the mosquitoes, <coughs> excuse me, 
can be expected to split their eggs between two types of cold. This splitting will disappear in the, in the risky environment because we don't have the balance between predation and overcrowding that was driving the splitting uh, behavior in the first place. Now, I'd just like to point out the last point is that this um, phenomenon where the splitting, egg splitting behavior disappears uh, is quite an important phenomenon. It's actually a bifurcation, a southern bifurcation in the in the uh, position strategy. You can see that quite nicely here. East from out here, we have a different uh, level of adult energy survival. So these are risky environments becoming a uh, safer environment. And you can see in the riskiest environments, the fitness of the, um, the fitness of the ingredients will be with the pure picky strategy is always higher than the thickness of the of the uh, invasive strategy. And it's only as the environment becomes safer that these two come together and here we find that the this is uh, the crossover between the picky and the implementation fitnesses and this is where the uh, where the evolutionary stable strategy appears. It appears suddenly at around the uh, around uh, day survival and By the way, I think that day survival for for higher uh, sea coast species. Bifurcations are extremely important in general when we do mathematical <coughs> modeling of just about anything, which is pretty much what we're looking for, because they represent distinct behavior types uh, of the model, and in this case, you know, distinct behaviors of the of the organism. And it's particularly important for us if we're looking at um, biological control methodologies because biological control methods may work in one region of, of parameter space and should not work in another. It may even actually make things worse. We may get a situation where on one side of the bifurcation uh, introducing predators reduces the, the adult population size, whereas on the other side it may actually increase the adult yeah, population size. So these things are, are in general um, worth looking for. So, um, so that's it. This is a, this is really just a, a, a way of integrating, <coughs> rather looking at uh, infectious uh, elements of, of, um, of disease control here. We're looking more at the ecological um, biocontrol elements and, um, and how we have to bring the different aspects of, of the, uh, the ecology of the, of the species that we're working in together and perhaps integrate uh, things from those integrate mathematical models, which is, um, which is sometimes a little tricky. Thank you very much.